The hour convening having arrived, all members will please come to the floor of the House and take their seats. All members will ask the clerk to ring the bell. I'll ask all members to please come to the floor of the House. We're about to have the call of the roll here. All members. We'll call the roll. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. We'll have them mark you present, Representative. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Good afternoon. Uh, I hope all of you uh, are happy to be back and ready to go back to work. Day six of this session is beginning. We're going to have scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag. It is my honor to introduce the Chairman of the uh, Higher Education Subcommittee of the Appropriations Committee and the representative from the 36th District, Representative Earl Earhart, to introduce the Chaplain of the Day, Representative Earhart. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me today to uh, come here and introduce my pastor, uh, Mr. Mike Lynch of North Star Church in Kennesaw. Mike's a native Georgian. He's uh, originally from Fayetteville. Uh, I've been uh, with Lynn Westmoreland and a lot of the Ronnie Chance and a lot of those that we all know and have served with over the years. He lives in Cobb County now, and his wife, Ann, and the, his two, two kids, Mary Michael and Casey. Uh, Mike teaches my men's group as well as the, the pastor, and I, I took a, a look and a little bit of a survey of some of my friends in there, and I was going to get some anecdotal information, uh, you know, just good stuff to tell about your pastor. And then I thought, well, uh, discretion being the better part of valor to demonstrate the political acuity I may have gained over the last 20 or so years, I, uh, a man who has an unrebuttable podium every Sunday who can... Uh, talk about you, I, I thought I'd, uh, I'll just skip some of those, uh, those little vignettes about my friend, friend Mike. Uh, he's um, a graduate of Liberty University, and uh, he pitched for Liberty, owned some D1 baseball records. I probably shouldn't get into those records he actually owns. Uh, that may come back to haunt me. <laughs> the, uh, he's, he's the pastor of a really growing and giving church. Uh, I've, I've been there since Easter Sunday this year. I, I, I moved my letter, and it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to be. It's made a big difference with me and my family as well. He's, this, this church has a mission to so many, so many who have uh, never been in church, so many who are carried into church like myself and have been there all their lives, but they, they reach, they're reaching out, they're growing, they're giving. They're, there's just a really true 
truly blessed place, and I'm, I'm proud to be there. So I want you to take a minute and, and listen to my friend and a true man of God and of grace, uh, Mr. Mike Lynch, pastor of North Star Church. Well, I am honored to be here. I know you guys are ready to get your work going, and you've got a lot on tap and a lot of things going over these next few weeks. You know, as you get started, I think adversity uh, will be one of those things at some point with all the good heart and good decisions you have, you're going to face those times that that uh, things don't come up quite like you want them to. Um, in my life, Earl was talking about, I had the privilege of playing baseball in college for a guy named Bobby Richardson. Many of y'all may remember for the New York Yankees. If it tells you anything about my career, he's out of baseball after he coached me. And so he got out shortly thereafter. There was a day, though, that I remember I learned something about adversity I didn't know. We were playing Virginia Tech. It was a cold, blustery, windy afternoon in Virginia, and I remember it was one of those days our first guy had been knocked out, and I came into pitch. I struck the first guy out came up, the next guy came up, the very first pitch, hit a home run. The next guy came up, the very first pitch, hit a home run. The third batter came up, next pitch, hit a home run. Well, the coach comes and gets me, and y'all know when you, when you get taken out of a game like that, if you're familiar with athletics, you get taken out of a game like that, nobody wants to touch you because you're like a bad disease, and nobody wanted anything to do with me. When I got to the dugout, it was like the parting of the Red Sea when I got down to the dugout and I laid my hat down, I laid my glove down, and we had a pitching coach. Pitched in the majors for 21 years, Al Worthington. He came by and he patted me on the leg and I looked at him for some comfort. And I said, coach, did you ever have a game like that? And he went, nope. All right, and I decided maybe my profession in life may end up being a little different, but I learned a great lesson that day. I learned that adversity is part of it. And it's not whether you're gonna face it, it's gonna be how you have to deal with it. It's not going to be whether we're all going to have days that we come out on the winning end. What is it when you come up against something and you come out on the losing end? Today, I think about the nation of Israel. For 40 years, they had wandered in the wilderness behind the greatest leader who had ever existed. If we, if we could get a modern day leadership book about the life of Moses, there would be something in there for us all because Moses was the leader. Moses was the guy that could get you out. But Moses couldn't get the people to the land that God had promised them. And so for 40 years, they had wandered in captivity and, and in captivity, they had wandered and then they're in the wilderness, they couldn't get across. And finally, there was a day that God told a young man named Joshua, Joshua, you are the guy that's going to get them across. You're the guy that's going to get them through. Everything is stacked against you, but I'm telling you, and if you were Joshua or I was Joshua, there'd be some natural things that would come to our mind. Number one, we would go, if Moses couldn't do it, why can I do it? Oh, we can look at our jobs and what you do here and you could say, well, if the group that's come behind us in the past couldn't get us through, what makes us think that we can. We would think, well, these people that I've got, we've been wandering the wilderness. A whole generation's died off. We're not trained for battle. If we cross over into this new land that God's given us, what makes us think we can do it? Joshua could think, well, I was one of the ones that said we could in the first, in the first part. 40 years ago, I said we should have done this. Why are you holding this against me? Why am I the one that has to do it now? And over and over and over, you could have run these things in your mind. And you know this, anytime God calls you to do something great, there's going to be a million obstacles in your way in there. There's going to be a million things sitting in your way to tell you why you can't, why you shouldn't, why you won't. And God came to Joshua and he said something to him. I'm telling you, if we could capture this and we could bottle it and we could live it, whether it's in a football game like these young men that you're going to meet here in a few minutes, whether it's in the game of life, I want you to listen to what God said to Joshua. Now, Knowing all these things that are going through. Now, Joshua never said verbally what he was thinking. But based on what God told Joshua, you know, sometimes we think the only thing that God knows is what we tell him. And he knows everything anyways. So we know what he told Joshua, I think, was where Joshua was, was living. Listen to what he said. He said, Joshua, this is my command. He's already told him he's going to get up this nation and they're going to cross 
this river that looked impossible to take the land that he had promised to Moses 40 years prior. Listen to what he said. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you will go. Now, when he said be strong, do you think he was talking about physical strength? I don't think he was talking about physical strength. I think he was talking about inner strength. Because to overcome adversity, you've got to be strong in here, don't you? In all of us, whether it's in our family, in our livelihood, in what we do here, making a difference for our communities, we've got to be strong in heart. How do we find out whether someone's strong in heart or not? How do they overcome adversity? If we're strong in heart, we get back up and we keep battling. We get back up and we dive back into the battle. I remember hearing about a football coach one time that was telling his team, he said, listen, who do I want? Do I want a guy that gets down, gets back up, goes down, gets back up, goes down, gets back up? Who do I want? They said, you want the guy going down and getting back up? He said, no, I want the guy knocking all the guys down. That's the guy I want. But we all, but we all have times we get knocked down. The question is, are we strong in heart? Are we resilient? God said, Joshua, be strong. And then listen to what he said next. I want you to be courageous. It's one thing to stand for what's right when it's easy, but it's harder to stand when the odds are stacked against you. It's harder to stand. Courage isn't the absence of fear. Courage is standing in the face of fear, isn't it? Courage is saddling it up and getting out there. Even when we have trepidation in our heart, Joshua, be strong, and he told him this three times, and courageous. You stand because I told you to stand. Be strong and courageous. Then I, I love this next phrase, and, and this is for us, because as we grow older, we think we should have it all together. And then he said this, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I think whenever we get called to do something that's out of our character or out of our comfort zone, I think fear creeps in. And what does fear do to us? Fear paralyzes us, whether it's on a ball field, whether it's in, in, in the house, and we get ready to do something great, and we go, man, that fear creeps in, and, and doubt comes along with fear, and fear paralyzes us, and we stand still, and when we stand still, we never really stand still, do we? We really go backwards. We just quit going forwards. He said, Joshua, don't be afraid. And then he, then he said something next that I think is, man, this is where I live. And this is what I felt in the dugout that day. And little did I know after those three home runs, that was really gonna be really not that big a deal in life compared to some of the other adversity you're gonna face. Then he said this, and don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. You know, the opposite of courage is being discouraged. The opposite of courage is getting down on ourselves. The opposite of courage is we set out with great goals and aspirations but we quit standing up to those things and all of a sudden we get discouraged and we let things pass us by and we let things move by us. And all of these things sound impossible till the last line that he said to Joshua. Listen to what he said. For I am with you and I will never leave your side. It's one thing to face it head on just being tough. It's another thing to face it head on when we know that God stands at our side and he walks with us and he never takes his eye off of us and he will see us through. There's times we all feel alone. You may be in the middle of the public eye like you can feel at times and even with what we do sometimes and I can feel at times, but then there are those times we get by ourselves and we could be the most alone people in the world. We'll let you in on a little bit of good news. Before you were ever even created, God knew everything about you. He loves you. And he never takes his eye off you. And I know he wanted to tell Joshua, Joshua, by yourself, you can't do it. But with me, you can. So come on. Let's keep walking. Let's keep moving. Let's keep going. And for us today, when we face adversity, we got an option. Do we cower down or do man, we dust off and we get back up and we move towards what God's called us to do? And that's my challenge for you today. In this session, you're going to have good days, I'm sure, and you're going to have bad days. But no matter what happens, keep walking, keep moving, and keep doing what you've been called to do. Would y'all pray with me? 
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you know everything about us and you love us anyways. Father, we're so thankful that we don't live down here in this vacuum and you're unaware of who we are and what we're going through. And Father, today for the members standing in this room and for the speaker, Father, today I pray for an extra dose of courage, an extra dose of strength, an extra dose of encouragement. Father, I pray that the, the members of this house will be strong and very courageous. They will not fear. They will not be discouraged. Because, Father, you've said it in your word in the Old Testament and you said it in the word in the New Testament through the words of Christ. For you are with us wherever we may go. God, bless this house. Bless this session. And may we walk strong in you, full of courage and full of heart for the task you've put ahead of us. And Father, I pray this today in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the Committee on Information and Audits, Chairman Davis. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Information and Audits has read and reviewed the journal from the previous legislative day and found it to be correct. Mr. Davis, the gentleman from the 109th District and the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. O'Neill, the 146 members have fallen to be established as the order of business in the first part of the period of unanimous consent. Introduction bills and resolutions, first reading and reference bills and resolutions, second reading bills and resolutions, morning orders, privilege resolutions. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none, and the resolution is adopted. First reading of House bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 743, Representative Rice, 51st, able to be entitled Ackman, Code Section 4893, relating to motor fuel tax. Ways and Means. House Bill 744, Representative Lindsay, the 54th, will be entitled Act Title 44 relating to partition. So as an act, the Uniform Partition of Heirs Property Act. Judiciary. House Bill 745, Representative Welch, 110th, will be entitled Act Title 31 relating to general provisions relative to health. Health and Human Services. House Bill 746, for Representative Maddox, 127th, the Bill entitled Act, Men Code Section 229.1, relating to administrative authority of the Commissioner of Agriculture. Agriculture and Consumer Affairs. House Bill 747, for Representative Beverly, 139th, Bill of Entitled Act, Men Title 40, relating to imposition of income tax. Ways and Means. House Bill 748, for Representative Brockway, the 101st, Bill of Entitled Act, Men Code Section 19823, relating to adoption records. Judiciary. House Resolution, 1137, Representative Wells, 110th, a resolution making renewed application to Congress of the United States to call a convention for the purpose of proposing an amendment to the Constitution of the United States. Governmental Affairs. Through the first reader. Second reading of House Bills and Resolutions, the clerk will read. 
HB 674 by Brunson Mitchell of the 88, the bill to enact the interception and disclosure of Geolocation Information Protection Act 2011, HB 676, Representative Harbin of the 118th, the bill relating to limitations on prosecutions, HB 678 by Representative Long of the 61st, the bill relating to health, HB 729 by Representative Knight of the 126, bill relating to revenue and taxation, HB 730 by Representative Henry of the 67th, the bill relating to competitive reward requirements for, and to general authority duty and procedure relative to state purchasing. HB 731 by Rester Lindsay of the 54th, a bill relating to charter schools. HB 732 by Rester McBray of the 153rd, a bill relating to the issuance of license plates to veterans awarded Purple Hearts. HB 733 by Rester Hightower of the 68th, a bill relating to family violence. HB 734 by Rester Dempsey of the 13th, a bill relating to professional counselors, social workers, and marriage and family therapists. HB 735 by Representative Bruce of the 64th, a bill relating to license to carry a weapon in temporary renewal permit. HB 736 by Rensa Bruce of the 64th, a bill relating to general provisions relative to insurance. HB 737 by Representative Williamson of the 111th, a bill to amend an act creating Board of Commissioners of Walton County. HB 738 by Representative Williamson of the 111th, a bill to amend an act providing for districts of elections of Board of Education Walton County. HB 739 by Representative McKellop of the 115th, a bill relating generally to mortgages, conveyances, secure debt, and liens. HB 740 by Representative Cook of the 18th, a bill to amend an act amending, revising, superseding, consolidating laws pertaining to Board of Commissioners, Carroll County. HB 741 by Representative Ralston of the 7th, a bill to amend an act providing appropriation of the state fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2011, ending June 30th, 2012. HB 742 by Representative Ralston of the 7th, a bill to make and provide appropriations for the state fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2012, ending June 30th, 2013. HR 1130 by Representative Cook of the 18th, the resolution urged the United States Congress to repeal the 17th Amendment of the United States Constitution through second readers. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's let's bring a little order to the house, please. We're about ready to recognize some very special Georgians and have some important introductions. I would ask you if you have conversations that require you roaming around the floor and meeting with other members. If those can't wait, take those into the ante rooms or out in the hallway. To introduce the doctor of the day today, it is my honor to introduce to you the minority leader of this house, Representative Abrams, to introduce the doctor of the day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my honor to introduce the doctor of the day, Dr. Frank M. Pickens. He's a board certified internist. He obtained his undergraduate degree at Wofford College and completed his medical degree at Emory University School of Medicine. Dr. Pickens conducted his internship and his residency in internal medicine at the Emory University, Emory University affiliated hospitals. He completed his fellowship in pulmonary medicine at Emory University Hospital. And then he made a different life choice for some, including the speaker. He now practices at the Georgia Institute of Technology Student Health Services. Um, please do not hold that against him. He is a member of the American College of Physicians and the AMA. He's also a member of the Board of Directors of the Atlanta Braves 400 Club. He enjoys re running, golfing, baseball, and in case any of you like to go out on the beach, he is a certified scuba diver. So please help me welcome Dr. Frank Pickens. Well, good afternoon. It's an honor for, for me to be here with you today, and I just want to say that I appreciate your service to the state of Georgia. And if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Let's get a picture.
I'm going to ask the House to come to order. Um, we've got a very special recognition and resolution that we want to do. I'm, we're going to set the, set the table for it. Clerk will play the audio visual. I hope you'll help me welcome to the podium author Robbie Burns and one of the greatest receivers and football players in Georgia history, Lindsey Scott. Lindsey Scott, Lindsey Scott. In a minute, I'm going to have the clerk read a resolution, but um, there are certain days, uh, and I know we honored Larry Munson a few weeks ago, and um, a little sad, but there are certain days in our uh, history and even in sports history that become uh, really a part of who we are here in Georgia. And I can remember being at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville on that afternoon in 1980, and we got word that that Georgia Tech had tied Notre Dame, the number one team in the nation, and there we were getting beat by that uh, school out of Florida, and then Buck Blue scrambled around and threw to Lindsey Scott and the world turned right side up. So uh, uh, the amazing thing about that, and we've heard the, uh, the, the, the Munson call and have seen the replay so many times over the last, um, 30 years plus is that um, that is now part of a really great book and I hope you have a chance to get a copy. I uh, understand you may have that opportunity today and have it signed. Robbie Burns uh, has published articles on sports and sports history for over two decades and Baluda Scott, The Greatest Moment in Georgia Football History is his first book. He served 11 years as the Public Relations Director for the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. He's written for uh, the Macon Telegraph, the Baton Rouge Morning Advocate. He's been published nationally in magazines. He's one of ours. He graduated from Mercer University in 1989. Uh, he's also a graduate of Tattnall Square Academy. He and his wife Dawn live in Macon and they have two children. And it is a great, great book. I got to tell you, uh, um, uh, Representative Holmes gave me one for Christmas, I think, last year. And thank you very much for that. Uh, Lindsey Scott, of course, became a legend that day. Uh, he and I were visiting before, and I told him he was already my hero because I remember when he was running kickoffs back for touchdowns the year before, which was not that great a year, actually, but it, uh, it led to great things. Um, he was the 13th overall pick in the first round of the 1982 NFL Draft by the Saints and played there four years. All-state performer at Wayne County High School, um, and he and his wife, Rhonda, is Rhonda's with him today. Rhonda, please stand up and let us say hello to you. <laughs> Lindsay, and, Lindsay and Rhonda live now in Valdosta. They have four children. Um, I'm honored to be joined in this resolution with their representative, Representative Amy Carter, and by my bulldog brother, the Chairman of the Ethics Commission, Chairman Joe Wilkinson. The clerk will read a resolution. 
House Resolution 1138, Representative Ralston the 7th, Representative Carter the 175th, Representative Wilkinson the 52nd, Representative Holmes the 125th. A resolution recognizing and commending Robbie Burns and Lindsey Scott and inviting them to be recognized by this House of Representatives and for other purposes. Whereas Robbie Burns has published articles on sports and sports history for over two decades, most recently became the author of Blue to Scott, The Greatest Moment in Georgia Football History. Whereas Robbie Burns served 11 years as Public Relations Director of the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame, and Lindsey Scott ran into legend against the Florida Gators in 1980 as he took a short pass from Buck Blue and turned it into a 93-yard sc scoring drive that gave Georgia a 26-20 victory and catapulted the Bulldogs to the national championship. Scott was 13th overall pick in the first round 1982 NFL draft by the New Orleans Saints and played four seasons whereas the outstanding athletic achievements of Lindsey Scott and Robbie Burns to writing about sports are worthy of recognition. Now, therefore, be resolved by this House of Representatives, members of this body commend Lindsey Scott and his athletic ability as well as Robbie Burns and his, for his love and dedication to sports writing and invite them to be recognized by the House of Representatives at a date and upon a time to be designated by the Speaker of this House. Please help me welcome now uh, to the podium, author Robbie Burns. Robbie. Thank you all so much. Um, first off, I've got to thank uh, Jesus Christ for giving me the opportunity to be here. And uh, he's the reason why the book was written. Uh, he's patterned my life in a way that it just made it too easy for me to get in touch with all the people I needed to contact for this to become reality. Um, I got to thank my wife who's here with me today, Dawn, my daughter, Hannah Rose, and uh, my stepson, Hunter, who's, who's at school, uh, for their support. My parents who are here, their support, my sister and, and brother-in-law. Um, and also, you know, want to thank Lindsey Scott, because if he hadn't have caught that pass, I wouldn't have had anything to write about. And, <laughs> But uh, I want to thank Speaker Ralston for, uh, for having us here today. Uh, this is quite an honor. Uh, this book has been on a great journey. And uh, I never would have figured that it would uh, be in the House chambers right now. And that's just a testament to what the Lord has wanted to do with it. And uh, the message I think you'll find that comes out of the book is that the play was third and 11. There was uh, looked like no hope. Time was running out. Everybody's going through some, something like that at some time and that uh, hope is ahead, it's not behind. And thankfully, that's what, uh, that's what Buck and Lindsay and the rest of Georgia looked at it like that uh, 31 years ago. But uh, again, thank you for having us, thank you for having me. It's, a, it's an honor more than you can imagine. Um, and I do thank you, God bless you. He really needs no introduction, Lindsay Scott. Thank you, thank you. It's certainly a, a, a honor and a privilege for me to be here today. And uh, uh, you know, I got to first, like Robbie, I got to thank God. You know, because uh, the minister earlier was talking about adversity, and uh, you know, I think you know, you talk about third and eleven. You know, there was a little bit of adversity doing before that play. <laughs> It was a little bit of adversity, but uh, you know, I like to, you know, uh, recognize my wife. I think she's always been recognized. I can't go home if I don't do that, you know. <laughs> my wife Rhonda's here with me today, but uh, this has been a journey for me. And it, and and uh, uh, the thing, the thing I like about it is that that I've made a, a great friend in Robbie Burns. I mean, and Robbie, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him myself a little bit. Robbie was a ninth grader in 1980. And, uh, you know, but I, the thing I love about Robbie in the book is it, it shows his passion and the passion for college football. And, you know, I need to say this because I need to clarify this, you know, it's not about me. It, 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 it's about a team. It's, it's, it's about a university. It's about a group of people. It's about passion for college football. And I'm just glad that I'm fortunate enough to, I was fortunate enough to be a part of that. But Robbie, I wanna, you know, I'm not gonna stay long. I just wanna tell him the favorite part of my book was, the favorite part of Robbie's book was, let's get that straight, was the fact that uh, he talked to, uh, uh, it was Buzz Cook, 
He's a, he's a 1978 Georgia alumnus. And, and Buzz says in the book, he says that, uh, he says that uh, he don't know if God really, really cares about who wins or loses a football game. And he, he says he don't even really know if God cares, you know, about the outcome of a football or athletic events in general. But he said on December 8, 1980, God was a bulldog, you know. <laughs> and I and I love that. And I love that. And 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 Robbie has certainly been a blessing in my life, blessing in my life today. And I'm glad that, that I've been, a, been able to be a part of this. And I'm honored to be here today. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to give you all a resolution. Uh, give you a copy. Robbie and uh, Lindsey Scott will be out in the ante room. So if you want to um, greet them, we're going to do some other uh, business. And they will be out there visiting uh, for a few minutes. Okay, I'm going to ask you to come back to order. You have, you've got to greet a true football legend and um, the next group, there may be one in the making in that group. So for our next invite resolution, the chair recognizes Representative Frazier. Representative Frazier. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The bright lights in the Georgia Dome made that silver trophy shine almost as bright as the faces on the Burke County Bears. Burke County High School football team clinched its first ever state football in December, a 28-14 win over Peach County. Mr. Clerk, would you read the resolution? House Resolution 1139, Representative Frazier, 123rd, Representative Jackson, 142nd. A resolution commending the Burke County High School Bears football team on their class AAA state championship and inviting them to be recognized by the House of Representatives. Whereas through perseverance and iron determination, the Burke County Bears finished their 14-1 season with their first Georgia High School Association championship title in school history with a dominating 28-14 victory over Peach County. Whereas Burke County's high school's first state championship in football and 666 points scored by the 2011 Bears is a school record and the third highest in a season in Georgia history. 
the astute direction direction of head coach Eric Parker will go down as only one of only six coaches in Georgia who has won a state championship as a player and as a coach. Now, therefore, be resolved by the House of Representatives, members of this body, congratulate Burke County High School Bears football team on winning the 2011 Class AAA State Championship and invite the team and head coach Eric Parker to be recognized by this House of Representatives at a date and time to be designated by the Speaker of the House. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, accompany me here today in support of the Burke County football team is our superintendent, Linda Bailey, in the gallery, our school board president, and also our councilman and the entire athletic team. And although our superintendent is here, Waynesboro is still going on. We do have people still working. Give a round of applause to the 2011 Trip Region 3 AAA football champions for the state of Georgia. On behalf of the Burke County Bears, we'd like to thank the House of Representatives and Representative Gloria Frazier uh, for the invitation. This is really a big deal for the entire group. Uh, Waynesboro, Georgia is one of those small towns on Friday night where high school football is a big deal. So obviously the accomplishments of this team uh, has really been a point of a lot of celebration in that community. Uh, obviously it took a lot of hard work to get there. State championships don't come easy and we had to beat a lot of good people. And I'm joined here by a small representation of our senior class. We have 22 seniors. Uh, we have over 72 varsity players. And um, I'm not going to introduce each one of them individually, but this group was a group that just refused to give up, refused to lose. And I think that we at Burke County really take hold of the motto that athletics is the other half of education. Certainly it's not the most important thing that goes on day to day at Burke County High School. Obviously academics are, but we are proud of the lessons that our kids learn on the athletic surface. We're proud of their attitude that they display in competition. And uh, we're certainly proud of this accomplishment. Again, we would like to thank all of you for having us here. And uh, if it's okay with you, we'd like to come back in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's get a picture. They can be anything.
I'm going to ask members to begin coming back to the floor. We've got a little bit of business to take up. Members, come back to the floor. Before we do that, I'm going to ask the clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. House Resolution 1138, Representative Ross for the seventh. Recognize the committee, Robbie Burns, Lindsey Scott. This resolution has been adopted by the House. House Resolution 1139 by Representative Frazier, 123rd, committing Burke County High School Bears football team. This resolution has been adopted by the House. The following two resolutions are invitation resolutions. They're being read for the first time today and refer to the committee on rules. A resolution by Representative Stevens, the 164th, recognizing January 24th, 2012, as Georgia Music Day at the Capitol, inviting Georgia Music Partners and the Recording Academy Atlanta chapter to be recognized by the House. The next resolution is an invitation resolution being read for the first time today and being referred to the Committee on Rules. A resolution by Representative McCall 30th, recognizing February 14, 2012, as Georgia Farm Bureau Federation Day of the State Capitol inviting members to be recognized by the House of Representatives. The following resolutions are privileged resolutions and being read for the first time for adoption. A resolution by Representative Jones 46th, recognizing commending. Southwest Airlines on its expansion into Atlanta, Hartsville Jackson International Airport, the busiest in the world. Resolution by Representative McCall, the 30th, recognizing February the 7th, 2012, Equine Youth Day at State Capitol. Resolution by Representative Epps, 128th, honoring the life and memory of Ophelia Swanson. Resolution by Representative Holmes, 125th, recognizing commending Deacon Joe K. Davis. Resolution for Representative Holmes, 125th, recognizes the committee, Deacon Gus Whitlock, and for other purposes, through the privilege resolutions. Is there any objection to adopting the privilege resolutions? The chair hears none, and the resolutions are adopted. Okay, we're going to take up a... Um, Joint resolution. Clerk will read the resolution. House Resolution 1140 by Representative O'Neill, 146th, a resolution relative to adjournment and for other purposes. Yeah. Do you need me? Chair recognizes the majority leader of the House to explain the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, you have before you an adjournment resolution that very ambitiously takes us out through day 30. I don't know that that's ever been precedented here before, but uh, this is an attempt uh, by your leadership to allow you to plan your, your, your professional life at home, but also more importantly to allow you to plan your activities here. Uh, so we, we feel like that uh, this is good for everybody to know what to expect. Now obviously there may be, may be some uh, things that we don't know about now that could, could alter this under emergency circumstances, but uh, we, we hope not. Uh, we will be in session according to this resolution if you approve it all five days of this week uh, Next week we will be in four days uh, The following week we will be adjourned Monday and Tuesday and in, in, in the last three days of the week Which will get us through day 21 Which uh, is Friday February the 17th? Um, all of those romantics among you will note that you'll be off on Valentine's Day and the day before Valentine's Day so that you can make all the appropriate uh, preparations for that day. Um, we'll be in return on Monday, February the 20th through Thursday the 23rd. Uh, we'll, and then the following Monday, February 27th through Wednesday, February 29th, which will take us to day 28. We'll come back the following Monday, March the 5th for day 29, 
We will be in adjournment as we usually are the day before day 30, and day 30 will then be March the 7th. And we will then return the following Monday. So it's very likely you'll be here to close to midnight on March the 7th. And so you'll be out uh, according to this adjournment resolution the next uh, two days and then through the weekend and not back here until Monday. Uh, the minority leader asked me earlier what time we were going to return on Mondays. And we'll assume that we're going to return at 10 o'clock unless we announce otherwise. Mr. Speaker, I'll be happy to yield any questions. If there are any, otherwise I would ask this House's support on this joint adjournment resolution for the Senate. You don't appear to have any questions. That's a rather ambitious schedule, uh, Mr. Leader. I think indeed it is, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, a great deal of gratitude for this goes to you, sir, and your leadership, and we're very grateful for that. With that, sir, I'll yield the well. The gentleman has yielded the well. All those in favor of House Resolution 1140 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. We're going to be going on to morning orders as soon as this roll call vote is uh, completed. So if you have signed up for a morning order, you might want to be making your way down to the front. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? All members voted. If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the adoption of House Resolution 1140, the ayes are 162, the nays are zero. This resolution, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore adopted. House will give attention to the members doing morning orders and making announcements. The chair recognizes for a joint morning order the chair of the Public Safety and Homeland Security Committee, Chairman Purcell, and the chair of the Game, Fish, and Parks Committee, Chairman Burns. Mr. Speakers and ladies and gentlemen of the House, I hope each of one of you have enjoyed a small loaf of raisin bread today that was left in your office. Today we are celebrating Effingham County Day at the Capitol, uh, a previous resolution that we all uh, passed in the House, 1112, was adopted as Effingham County Day. Also uh, today, Representative Burns and I are here to ask you to attend this evening a very special uh, party down at the depot. <laughs> with good home cooking from Effingham County. Well, so with that, Representative Burns. Thank you, Ann. Um, Mr. Speaker would like to recognize a whole group of folks at this. Mr. Speaker, okay. is, it, is it okay if we recognize okay. folks in the gallery? Um, a lot of good folks, uh, friends, family, uh, some good leadership of youth that we have up here from several different groups, leaders uh, in our county, from the chamber and from different elective and appointed positions. If you would, all of you from Effingham County, please stand so we can welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we appreciate y'all being here. Thanks for making the trip up, and we look forward to all of us being with you tonight down at the depot. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And that again is at 5 uh, p.m. tonight at the depot. Also, Mr. Speaker, if we may, we wish to continue to recognize uh, from a previous resolution that was adopted by this House, House Resolution 1111, we have with us from the Effingham YMCA today a group of young people that were uh, nominated to be a part of an academy, and it's the Christian Leadership Academy. They've been here all day with us attending various meetings and also in the gallery. Mr. Speaker, may we allow them to stand? Go ahead and stand. I think it's okay. <laughs> so we're proud to have them here. 
This is our third year and it's a pilot program for our YMCA and we're very excited about it and hope to have it across the state of Georgia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Chairman Rinders for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to tell you what's going on in the uh, great county of Lee County in Leesburg, Georgia. Two years ago, you may, may remember Buster Posey was the National League Rookie of the Year, barely beating out Jason Hayward of the Braves. And then last year, Luke Bryan was Country and Western Newcomer of the Year. He's got a number one hit out now. Well, in case you missed it, and I know we got a lot of fans here, you need to go and check out last week's American Idol. Yes, American Idol. I know the majority of the leaders are huge fan tapes, all the episodes. But the last act of the night was Philip Phillips from Leesburg, Georgia, did an outstanding job, and they said he was the best of the night. So down in South Georgia, we want all y'all to go out and watch Philip Phillips on American Idol. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have a couple of announcements. Uh, the chair recognizes Chairman Stevens of the Economic Development and Tourism Committee for an announcement. Chairman Stevens. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, tomorrow starts a very unique day. It is the first, the inaugural, uh, Georgia Music Day at the Capitol. Tomorrow morning between 8.30, excuse me, 8.45 and 9.30, you may want to be in 403 at the Capitol to get a picture. We have some photo ops of some people that will be at this inaugural day at the Capitol for music. Some of the people will be Johnny Colt of the Black Crows, Train, Chuck Lavelle of the Rolling Stones, Mac Powell, Third Day, Corey Smith, Robert Spano, the uh, Atlanta Symphony Orchestra director, Christian and Brandon Bush of Sugarland, Driving and Crying, Coy Bowles and John Hopkins, the Zach Brown Band, with more that will be there tomorrow. Again, this is 845 until 930, 403 at the Capitol. Be there for your photo op. Thank you. This can't be good. The chair recognizes the chairman of the Rules Committee for an announcement, Chairman Meadows. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At 2.30 today, there will be a Rules Committee meeting to set an agenda for tomorrow. I would encourage each of the Rules Committee to be there. There's no excuses today. And, uh, Calhoun football team be here tomorrow too, so thank you. What, what's the school colors up there, Mr. Chairman? We all want to wear them tomorrow. It's black and gold and it's not for Georgia Tech. It's the Calhoun yellow jacket. The dress code for tomorrow, if you're going before the rules committee, is black and gold. Chair recognizes Representative Carter for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just want to remind everyone the United Way reception is this evening, 5 to 7 in the Blue Room over at the depot. Thank you. We had a couple of birthdays last week while we were having hearings of the appropriation committees. Chair wants to extend birthday greetings to Representative Hugh Floyd last week. Representative Floyd. Another birthday last week was Representative Gerald Green. Representative Green. And today, today, happy birthday greetings to Chairman Maxwell, Chairman Howard Maxwell. Page photographs will be taken up here at the rostrum immediately upon adjournment.
Page photographs will be up here at the roster mump on adjournment. Chair recognizes the majority leader of the House for a motion. Mr. Speaker, I move this House now adjourn until 10 a.m. Tuesday, January 31st, 2012. On the motion of the majority leader that this House be adjourned until Tuesday, January the 24th at 10 o'clock a.m., all those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes clearly have it. This House stands adjourned until tomorrow at 10 a.m.